Hi everyone, Gareth at QCT here, and today we're doing a video talking about uh, converting a Ubiquiti Unify switch, like this one here, from running 240 volts uh, AC, which is the nominal supply voltage here in the UK, and we're converting it to run on 12 volts DC, uh, for example, to run from a car battery. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, we'll just do a quick word from our sponsor, uh, which is just me wearing a different shirt. Hi. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Quietly Confident Technology Limited is a managed services provider and IT consultancy based in Staffordshire in the United Kingdom. We work with companies large and small to make the most of their IT and help drive businesses forward using technology. If you'd like to talk to us about any of the subjects we talk about on the YouTube channel, or if you'd just like to talk to us about how we can help your company, head to our website at www.qctech.co.uk where you'll find a contact us form with details of how to get in touch. Now back to the content, thanks. Hey, welcome back. Uh, before I get too far into this, I just wanted to do a quick disclaimer that I recorded quite a bit of this video a few days ago, uh, but for some reason the device that I was recording on, um, the audio was terrible, the lip sync seemed to be miles out, the uh, frame rate on the videos was, was bad. Um, I think I've got a failing hard drive, but I'm, I'm not really sure. So uh, some of these bits of video are gonna be me uh, doing this now. Some is gonna be from a few days ago. I may well overdub the audio, because if the video kind of looks okay, but the, but the audio's terrible, I might just overdub that. Um, but yeah, so you might see a few, uh, a few transitions in this, uh, and me uh, wearing this top one time, and then all of a sudden wearing a white shirt. Um, that's why. So the backstory to this job um, is that a couple of weeks into lockdown, um, I received a phone call from a customer of ours, their residential care home, and uh, about half of their wireless network had gone down. Now they're a new customer, so I haven't had chance to map out the network, work out what, you know where everything is and how everything's plumbed in. Um, but it became clear that around about 50% of the site was, was down, they have two switch cabinets, so uh, I was kind of guessing that maybe it was everything that was going back to one of those switch cabs that was the issue. Um, because we were in lockdown, the care home had banned all visitors, so it was only staff allowed on site. Um, so obviously that meant that their residents were unable to have visits from their family, so they were all trying to uh, contact the family using Skype and Zoom and Teams and that sort of stuff. Um, obviously that's not ideal when your wireless network's not working, um, and what they were doing in the interim was moving people around so that they could get their devices into range of the wireless. But clearly moving people around in a care home during COVID is not ideal either. So I went to site, fairly quickly established that the problem was uh, this, in fact this exact switch. Um, so Unify switch, which had failed. Um, now fortunately I'm a, a big fan of Unify gear and we have spares lying around. So I'd taken spare switches with me. So um, I swapped this switch out for a known good one, um, fired everything back up again, wireless worked, day was saved, um, people were able to contact their families again, which was a, a nice good feeling. Um, so I thought, well, I'll bring this back to the office. Um, when I get here, I'll take it apart, see if I can work out what's going on with it, because it seems silly to scrap the whole switch if it's, uh, if it's just something simple that needs looking at. So that's where this started. You can see this is the front of the switch with the switch boards there and the SFP modules. Um, inside the switch, main circuit board, processors hidden under here, and the power supply is up here. So I'm in the UK, so we are nominally 240 volts coming in from the supply, from the main supply, into here, and it comes out at this end are, as a 48 volt supply. So 48 volts in through here. Um, there are Two red cables and two black cables here, not entirely sure why. Um, they are common, so, so this end and at this end. And if I just grab this power supply, I'm not sure how well you can, you can see this, but the, those three pins there are all common together, and those three pins, the bottom three, are all common together. And that corresponds to the six pins on this connector, four of which have been used. Um, so anyway, so there's 48 volts on both of the red and zero volts on the, on the two blacks. So uh, I established that we weren't getting 48 volts out of the faulty power supply, so I uh, so realised that that was what was causing the switch not to power on. 
swapped the power supply in from another switch, and it all worked, which sort of confirmed my suspicions. So at this point, I had an idea. Uh, QCT work quite closely with a company called Bid Events, and we provide wireless networks to large events and festivals. So um, sometimes it's just providing wireless access for the actual event, so for the event organisers, for the stage, for the, um, uh, the press, media guys, that sort of thing. Um, and other events we provide wireless access to members of the public as well. So the way that we do that is we run fibre optics wherever we can, um, we're talking about massive sites, so, you know, we're talking about sites that are, that are two, three, four, five kilometres across. Um, so we're not running Cat5 cable at 100 metres and then put a switch in another 100 metres. Um, so we run fibre where we can. Um, we use point-to-point -point wireless links where we can't. So if, for example, we need to span from, from the stage um, out to a concession area at the, behind the stage, uh, in front of the stage, you know, in the area where um, members of the public are, then we'll, we'll maybe do a point-to-point -point link there. Um, but either way, we quite often find ourselves in the situation where we need to put a tower up uh, with wireless access points on where there's no power. So what we do is we have a little control box, some scaffold, a uh, solar panel. So we gather solar, comes down the, uh, down the scaffold, into the control box and in there we've got a solar controller, we've got a set of batteries, um, some of them are just standard leisure batteries that you'd find on a caravan or a motorhome, uh, some of them are more specialist sort of gel filled batteries. Um, we run, so we, we charge the batteries, we then have an inverter in that box and we power uh, typically a unified switch uh, which then uses PoE to power the access points. Some of those access points are on the pole with the solar panel. Some of them are, are run out on cables, um, but we also do CCTV and that sort of stuff as well um, using the same system. So that's all good and it works and we love it, it's a great system, um, but it, it occurred to me that there's an amount of inefficiency in that system. So we, you know, we're taking the solar, we're dragging that down uh, into the solar charger, into the battery. That's all good, that's about as efficient as we can get it. But we then go from the battery into an inverter to go from 12 volts up to 240 volts 240 goes into the switch, and it turns out, of course, the switch then drops it back down to 48 volts. So, yeah, so what I thought was, well, why don't we cut out the middleman there and we see if we can go straight from 12 volts up to 48 volts directly in the switch. Simplifying the installation, removes a bit of kit, so it removes a failure point. Um, it moves some of the high voltage stuff out of there as well, so we're only dealing with a much lower voltage makes everything safer and more efficient. So that's what I did. Now this is, this is the actual unit that, that came out of the customer's faulty. Um, I have had permission from them to use this for experimenting. But I just thought I'd crack this open and show you what I've got inside here. Now, please remember this is very much a R&D <laughs> job at the moment. Um, now the easiest way I found to, to open these switches up is actually take the two screws out of the back, turn it over, and at this point you might notice the, uh, the extra power connector there. But turn it over and then a good push, so push on the feet. Turn it back over and then shuffle the case forward and over. And you have to be a little bit careful at this point because there is this cable here that connects the front panel down to the board, so don't just yank this away. Carefully pull that out, um, and you can see that's connected onto that, which is actually the front panel LED on the Unify switches. Okay, so what I did, I removed the power supply, disconnected this uh, plug here, um, and removed this cable here. Um, I then chopped that cable, which is why on this, uh, this is the this is the power supply that actually came out of here. So chop that off there so that I've got the connector to reuse. In a final version, obviously, I will buy connectors and we will actually terminate those properly. Um, and I grabbed one of these. Now this is a um, 
This is a 12 to 48 volt DC to DC converter. Um, I got this from Amazon. I'll find a, a, an example in a couple of minutes. Um, but you can get them from all over the place. You can get them from eBay and from AliExpress and all those sort of, you know, the usual suspects. Um, this is a 5 amp max on the output side. So you get 48 volts at 5 amps. Um, I'll show you a bit of math in a couple of seconds, but that's more than adequate for what we need to be doing. Um, and then I've used these guys. So th these are called, uh, their brand name is Wago, um, used in the UK. I'm not sure whether you get them elsewhere or not, but they're just terminal connectors. So just instead of using chop block, um, and these are, these are spring-loaded connectors. So these are quite common in the UK now in domestic wiring. Uh, because you're not allowed to use screw down terminals in inaccessible locations. Um, the idea there being that with screw down terminals, as the uh, as the power passes down the cable, it heats, the heating causes expansion, so it then it expands, it contracts, it expands, it contracts, and screw down terminals actually will work themselves loose over time with that expansion and contraction. Um, because these are spring loaded, so you literally just chuck the, push the cable in like that, push the lever down, and that's locked into place. But that's a spring-loaded connection, so it, it'll, as it heats and contracts, the uh, the connector will heat and contract, expand and contract around it. So, anyway, three gangs, one, three gang ones of these, so that we've still got both of these cables in. But we've just got the one supply cable, so the positive and the negative from the transformer. Um, I then also grabbed a pack of these. I mean, nothing special here particularly, these are just from Amazon, um, just a DC jack. I'm not sure if it says what size it is on the pack, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, pack of those and so these with a little plastic boot for the cable. And they come with nuts and nuts and washers and things. So a uh, 11 mil hole, I believe that was through the side of the case there. Tighten that up into there. Another couple of way goes. These are just the two way ones. Again, this is temporary. What I will probably do in a more permanent install is actually directly solder these. Straight into the uh, straight into the connector there, so remove an entire link, um, and that's about it. So there's a couple of just quick observations. So we'll, we'll look at the current ratings in a second. Um, I did notice, and I don't know how well you can you can see this on here, but there's a there's an earth pin just there, and what I found is with this particular size connector, if you uh, push it up against the PCB on that side and then slide it up. That kind of holds itself in nicely. Again, for production, we'll work out a slightly better fixing mechanism than that. Um, but it is quite a tall heat sink on it, so I've not got much room, but we'll work something out. So I'll chuck the cover back on here. Remember to reconnect the front panel. Um, and then and if you can just about see in here. So there's a little lip here, so you have to move this out far enough that way that the little lip will clip under. And there's also, there's a keyed hole here. And you have to make sure that you hit the, 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 the wider section of that onto this little nub in here. And there's one on this side as well. You're also fighting around the top of the heatsink. Can be a bit of a fiddle sometimes, but I think that's back in. Front looks all right. Back looks all right. So I'll just throw these two screws back in.
Okay, so the uh, the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. And uh, whilst I'm not gonna eat this switch, um, I'm just gonna just click over to this nice wide view here. So you can see over here, we have a fairly standard 12 volts leisure battery. So it's a leisure battery, not a standard car battery. Um, not designed for cranking the engine over, but it is designed for longer draw uh, and higher discharge. Um, and on top of that, we've just got a, a CTEC battery charger. That's just keeping the battery topped up and happy while I'm doing these videos and things. Um, and that's plugged into the wall, but obviously this does work without that connected. Um, off that, we have just a standard bit of um, flex here. This is three core flex, so I've just tied the earth down out of the way there so it doesn't get in the way. Um, and that's, uh, you know, again, this is very much a R and D uh, at the moment. This is in progress, so that's just shoved underneath there, and the battery terminals drop back down on top to uh, to trap that in. Um, so, yep, that's coming down to this length of cable here. And on the end of this, if you look down the, uh, the bottom corner there, that's the, the male end of the connector that we've got on the, uh, on the back of the switch here um, with a bit of heat shrink on it because this cable is far, far, far too big for, these, <laughs> for this connector. So there we have all the cable there. Um, if you have a look uh, on, on that shot just down there at the, uh, at the power light here, Chuck that in the back of there, give it a few seconds, and on comes the light. Now this isn't currently adopted into anything, so it's not gonna power on and go blue like all good Unify gear should, um, but it is, gonna, uh, it is gonna power up. So that's all good. Okay, so just a quick sum up then. Um, so what we've done is we've taken a uh, broken Unify switch, or a Unify switch with a broken power supply is probably a uh, better way of putting that. Um, we've added a 12 volt power supply, um, connected up to a battery, and we have now a booted and happy Unify switch running on 12 volts. So the next step really is going to be just to make this look a little bit more professional. Um, so I've already started Break it up some, some wiring harnesses, so we've got some, some ring crimps there that will go onto the battery terminals with, um, this, is, this is like a mini Anderson connector, I can't remember what these are actually called, but they're uh, yeah, similar to an Anderson connector, but it's a smaller version. So we're going to make up a few of those so that this can connect in a much, much safer manner. Um, I also want to do some current monitoring, so uh, I've got another set of videos that I'm doing sort of at the same time as this. Uh, we've got one of these, which is uh, an INA three one one, sorry three two two one board. Um, so you run uh, this runs on I square C, so you can connect this up to an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or something like that to monitor the current usage on three separate things. Uh, this particular board it has to be three things from the same supply, which is a bit of a pain, but um, that's fine. So we've got supply in, and then you put the load across these connectors, so I'm gonna make some wire connectors up. That's another project that I'm sort of doing uh, yeah, at the same time as this one. Um, so we'll measure all the current draws just to make sure that everything is safe. Uh, obviously this, this connector here, as well as having those on, also has a fuse carrier on it, so we'll fuse everything appropriately uh, to make sure it's all safe. Um, and then we'll, um, hopefully at some point, we'll be able to have outdoor events again where we actually need to use some of this kit. Um, and then we'll get it out and get it tested once, uh, yeah, get it tested in the field. So thank you for watching the video. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, it'd be great if you could uh, like the video if you have enjoyed it, because that helps Google realise that it's an alright video. Um, and if you're enjoying my stuff generally, then please subscribe to the channel. That would be great. Uh, thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon.